Are you overwhelmed by all of your creative projects and hobbies? Well, in today's installment of the Multicrafters Handbook, I've got some tips to help you get it all under control and make making stuff fun again. A couple of months back, I did a Q&A video and Joe asked the following question. Do I ever feel overwhelmed? How do you choose what to work on and what to add to the mental list? <laughs> Oof, that's a big one. I did touch on my answer to this in that Q&A video, but it's also a gateway to a much bigger project of creative overwhelm. So that is the plan for today. If you're new here today, hello and welcome. My name is Michelle and I love to do all of the crafts, but especially the stitchy ones. If you're not new, welcome back. And you may be wondering what makes me think I, of all people, am qualified to talk on this topic, but trust and bear with. So what do we mean by creative overwhelm? I think a general feeling of overwhelm in life is something we're all pretty familiar with, but it manifests in multicraftual folks a few different ways. First is the obvious, too many projects, not enough time. Feeling like you need to be faster and produce more so you'll be able to work on everything that interests you. Second is analysis paralysis, facing a mountain of possibilities and being asked to pick just one project to work on today, or just one thing to buy and kit up with your limited funds choices can be hard. And the third kind I've noticed is a more general sense of overwhelm, not necessarily feeling like you need to go faster, but just being, I guess, affected by the constant in-progress state of everything around you. Those are the big three we'll be dealing with today, but I'm curious if you find yourself affected in some other way. Do you have tips for dealing with it? Please do feel free to share in the comments because I dare say you are not the only one. Okay, I'm going to split this advice into two sections, mindset and practical. Personally, I think mindset is way more important for most of us, so let's start there. Whatever your particular flavour of overwhelm, I think step one is always the same. Consider your motivations. Why are you doing all of these projects in the first place? It's easier said than truly internalised, but crafting is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be relaxing, and yes, it's also supposed to produce pretty things, but if all you cared about was the pretty things, you would probably just buy them instead. So somewhere along the line, you do enjoy the process. Think back to when you first got into your first creative hobby. For me, it was when I was a really young kid, but maybe for you, it was a spontaneous sign up to an adult sewing class or a response to lockdown life. Regardless, at some point we all tried a new thing and we found a connection with that new thing. Something about crafting made us happy, and I think it's really important to remember that and allow ourselves to feel it again. That is the point of your hobby, not the end product. But how can you focus on enjoyment and relaxation when you have too many projects and not enough time, am I right? Well, my question for you is where is that pressure coming from? What is the legal definition of too many projects? Are the whip police likely to barge through your door at any moment? Look, I get it, the struggle is real. You've got your social medias for a start, where there's a constant parade of new projects, patterns, shiny things that grab your interest. And honestly, you know how much I enjoy flitting between different crafts, so no judgement here if you find yourself chasing those shiny new things. But be honest with yourself about why you're chasing the thing. Is it because you really, really want to, or is it because everyone on your feed or at your local craft group is making the same thing and you feel left out? I'm going to stare awkwardly at you for a second while you really think about this question. There, you now have permission to scratch off the to-do list anything that you weren't really that into in the first place. Admittedly, you probably still have quite a lot on, but baby steps and we will deal with the rest in a minute. First, it's time to shift your thinking. Have you ever known one of those people who are just always either at work or bored? I think we probably all know at least one, right? Well, those people are obviously at one extreme, and me trying 15 new hobbies at the same time to quiet the insatiable creative void is at the other extreme. But if I had to choose one, I'd probably go with my thing. So yes, maybe I have so many project ideas they'll never get done. But I prefer to think of it as having enough project ideas that I'll never run out. So let's say I'm right and there's no such thing as too many projects. Too little time is probably something we can all agree on. Yeah, sure, but also it's something we all need to fundamentally accept. We have a certain amount of time in this world, and if we're lucky, we get to choose what to do with quite a lot of it. Everyone has different demands on their time. Some of these are down to our own choices, and some of them are just not. Everyone is left with a different amount of free time, and if we choose to use that time on crafting, we'll necessarily make progress at different rates. Nothing controversial there, if we think about it for half a second, we all accept this, no problem. But somewhere along the line, when it comes to ourselves, toxic productivity creeps in. 
If you're unfamiliar, this is the feeling that we constantly need to be doing something. And it's what drives some of us to turn our previously relaxing hobby into efficient pretty thing production lines. Say it with me. Life is hard enough. Hobbies do not need to be productive. In fact, I would go so far as to say with the hectic way a lot of us live these days, hobbies should maybe be unproductive on purpose. Slow down. Take it one stitch at a time. Really need that clay. Try and peel the PVA glue from your palm all in one go. Enjoy the moment. It's possible you have this huge list of projects you would love to do, and it's equally possible that you will never get round to even half of them. But do you really think your outstanding whips are going to be a major source of deathbed regret? Probably not. Some of you are probably sitting there right now thinking, this is all fine and good, but my problem isn't too many projects, it's too many crafts. And as I've alluded to already, I get you. But I want to repeat here something that I said back in that video in May. Whether you are cross-stitching, knitting, polymer clay-ing, making soap, drawing, casting dice, whatever, what you are really doing is making stuff. These do not all need to be considered separate hobbies, and you do not need a complicated rotor system to make sure they all get their time to shine. As long as you're making stuff and it's making you happy, does it really matter that you didn't crochet anything for six months because you became briefly obsessed with building things out of Lego? I think you'll find it does not. Go with your gut and work on whatever you fancy at any given moment. Remember your motivations, and remember keeping up with other crafters is not your job. Okay. <sighs> we good? We zen? Sorted. I'm going to move on to practical tips, but I just want to really, really stress that doing these things because you're still trying to keep up with external pressures is just going to result in more of the same. If you know me, you know I am all too familiar with overwhelm, stress, and anxiety spirals in every area of adult life. Like, I barely function as a human. But where I mostly manage to keep it in check, with occasional exceptions like wondering if I'm crafting enough to warrant a monthly update video, is with my hobbies. I'm frugal, I'm slow, I spread myself thin between a million different projects at once so I barely make any visible progress at all. And I love it. Because I'm enjoying the process, and I know that ultimately finishing stuff isn't that important. Have I beaten you over the head enough with this now? Okay. Let's move on. Time for the practical tips you all actually clicked on this video for. Tip number one if you are feeling overwhelmed by something that should only be bringing you satisfaction and joy, take a break. And don't give me that, yes, I know you have a ton of projects on. Have you even been listening to the mindset section? Give yourself the night off and have a luxurious bubble bath instead. If you're not feeling that knitting project, just put it down and let it hibernate for a few weeks until you feel the urge to come back to it. There are no rules here. You're crafting because you want to. It's your choice and it can just as easily be your choice to stop for a bit and go do something else. Tip number two, and if you know me even the slightest bit, you knew at some point in this video I would encourage you to make lists. Making lists reduces clutter in your brain and therefore stress and overwhelm. But also, what gets measured gets managed. And what gets managed is way easier than what doesn't. What works for you is almost certainly going to be different to what works for me, but I have lists for active projects, random ideas, rough estimates of how long things will take that are always completely wrong but at least do stop me from planning too many projects at once. It's great! What you're looking at here is a free tool called Notion, which I use to organise my projects, my me-made wardrobe, and my YouTube calendar, as well as various other things. A couple of people have been asking about it, so I'm currently planning a video all about what it can do and how my personal setup works. If that seems like something you might be interested in, well... You know what to do. Whether you use an app, a beautiful and extravagant bullet journal, or just a scribbled on piece of paper that you carry around in your handbag at all times. At the very least, write your ideas down. It really does lessen the load, avoids frustration when you can't remember what you had planned, and it helps a lot when you find yourself standing in the middle of a huge sale in your local craft shop wondering what it is you need to buy first. Whether you would benefit from also tracking your active projects is up to you, but ideas? Do it. Okay, so remember we agreed that it is totally normal and okay to not have infinite time for crafts. Well, one thing that can help a lot there is prioritizing. The first thing is to prioritize crafting itself. There are always so many other distractions. It feels like life is so busy, but I'm willing to bet you probably spend quite a lot of time on stuff that really isn't that important to you. 
did you really mean to spend all that time on social media or did you just get sucked in and now you have no time left tonight for stitching? Are you really that into the TV show or is it just easier than getting up and going to find your crafting supplies? Could you be sneaking in some extra sewing time but instead you're watching this video? Yeah, I went there. Not making the time for things that are genuinely important to you is a recipe for burnout and believe me, I know. But I also know it's a lot easier said than done and sometimes you are just exhausted and need nothing more than to veg in front of the TV for the night. We run into problems when we start feeling guilty about that. Survival is way more important than crafting and your priorities are allowed to change from day to day. So yes, sometimes you really are that interested in the TV show because it's easier than getting up. And that's okay. But when you are able, set some time aside. Set an alarm if you need to. Whatever gets you doing the things you actually want to do. As well as prioritising crafting itself, having a nicely prioritised pile of projects can help a lot too. I've talked a lot this year about what I've been calling intentional crafting. Basically looking at past projects, figuring out exactly what you did love and hate about them, and using that information to put together a set of guidelines to help you choose better projects and prioritise the ones you already have. I have a whole video on my own very long-winded version of that process, which I'll link up there for anybody interested. But of course, a much simpler system will probably work just as well. Maybe you enjoy gift crafting and so the deadlines for each project naturally inform their priority. Or maybe you have no deadlines and all of your projects are pretty fun, in which case just prioritise the ones that excite you most, because why not? And you know what? Maybe you're thinking, oh no, all of my projects have equal priority, this is terrible, how will I ever choose? But actually that's great, it means you're completely free to work on anything at any time. You might just need to reduce your mental load a bit. So that's tip four. If you suffer from decision paralysis, for example, you might benefit from using one of these decision wheel apps. It takes the decision making process out of your hands and just lets you get on. Or maybe you'd enjoy what I'm going to call Project Bag Tombola. For example, I have this storage cube full of my active cross-stitch project bags, and sometimes I'll just blindly fish around in there and pick one at random. It's all stitching, it's all progress on whips, and sometimes you just don't have the capacity to care about what exactly it is you're stabbing repeatedly, am I right? A common issue I see is leaving a project to hibernate, even for a relatively short amount of time, and then having a ton of inertia stopping you from coming back to it. Usually that's because there is some missing information. Maybe the crochet hook you were using has now been used for another project and you can't remember where it is. Or maybe you just aren't sure what the next step was. Basically what I'm saying is consider a system where you leave a note for your future self, in the project bag, in your tracking app, wherever makes sense. And I just thought of this example for the video, but now I think about it, I think that could be really useful for me. So, note to self. Next up, if you want to do more of thing X, make sure thing X is easy for you to do. Makes sense, right? So what we just said about leaving yourself notes, that totally makes it easier to jump back into a project. Keeping projects and supplies near where you actually use them means when inspiration strikes, you'll have everything you need right there. See again my cross-stitch storage cube, which is conveniently located next to the couch, makes it easy to switch projects whenever I want, and has dramatically cut down on the amount of random floss I was leaving everywhere. Similarly, separate project bags. I know this is a very basic concept, but it really makes it easy to pick up everything you need in one go. Depending on the craft, maybe project bags aren't a thing, maybe it's project Tupperware containers, but whatever, you get the gist. Situational projects are a big thing for me that I highly recommend. I've talked a lot before about how I use sock knitting as my out of the house project, and I always have a sock project on the go. If I'm going somewhere, I know all I need to do is pick up my little cactus project bag and I'll have something perfect to keep me occupied. Easy peasy, no branding required. I also go so far as to categorise my projects in Notion so I can filter the list and choose wisely when we're, say, watching a film with subtitles. But I know that's probably a step too far for most. <laughs> Invest in tools that make life easier. Again, for a lot of us, sadly easier said than done, but if you are able to invest in the tools that make your life easier, it makes a huge difference. For example, I am a Q-Snap convert and I want to use them for everything. Unfortunately, I only own one of them and I can't justify spending on another one because I already have one. So I need to switch out projects on a fairly regular basis, which takes time and effort and means I mostly just feel like stitching whatever happens to already be in there instead. Once I can afford more though, BAM! Much easier rotation. Oh, that'll be the day. 
And finally, I hope you've really internalised by now that this is by no means necessary, but some people really enjoy the challenge and pushing themselves, so yes, you can probably learn to craft faster. By their very nature, most crafty hobbies are going to be quite slow, but it's all relative. So maybe you're able to choose the fastest of your crafts for any given project. For example, sewing a top is always going to be faster than knitting one, but maybe needle felting a small toy is going to be quicker for you than sewing a version would be. Then of course, within each craft, there are things to practice or tools you could be purchasing to speed up the process. It just varies wildly what those things are from craft to craft. Speaking of, I'm actually putting together a video full of tips on how to cross stitch faster, which is something I do know a surprising amount about, but just choose to ignore most of the time. So keep an eye out for that one if it sounds like something you might benefit from. Personally though, outside of those times when there's a deadline and you have to finish a project ASAP, I just prefer taking it slow. Your mileage, as always, may vary. So here's your summary. I hope you found at least one nugget of actionable advice in this video, and I hope I could help at least one person to just chill a bit with the constant pressure to be making all of the things right this second. Now if you'll excuse me, I have ignored all of my own great advice and started a 24 hours of cross stitch marathon, so I really better go and make some progress on that. I know, where to undermine the entire video. I'll be back soon with some more crafty nonsense, so in the meantime have a brilliant rest of your day and keep making cool stuff. Bye!